Okay, there was a video that hopefully you've just viewed that had to do with applications of exponential functions with growth. This video will show some examples that involve decrease or decay. Common applications of this are half-life of radioactive materials, populations in urban centers that are declining, like cities like Detroit, and light intensity of light as you travel through water. In each case, these exponentials have bases less than one. As a result of repeated multiplication by exponentials, the values will decrease with time. First example is a half-life example. So, when we have a half-life, that means half the life is left. That means half the life is lost. So the base would be 1 minus, for a loss, of half, leading to half. So the formula would be a accumulated amount is based on whatever amount is initially there, multiplied by half, repeat <coughs> pardon me, repeatedly, where little t represents the time that's actually elapsed, and big T represents the half-life time of the material. So this is a material characteristic. So I've made up a fictitious example of flanconium, which is a slow decaying radioactive material. And I'm going to tell you that the half-life of this material is seven years. What that means is that in seven years, half of whatever is there now will remain. So the question is, how much of a one kilogram sample would be left after a century? Now, that's time equals 100 years. Big T equals 7. A naught equals 1. <laughs> so what we're going to do is substitute these values into the formula, representing all of the things that we know. And we see that we have 1 half with an exponent of 100 over 7. Let's get our calculator and find out what that is. Now 1 half is decimal 5. Let's put the exponent in a bracket. And there's my 7. And I get 5 decimal 0, 1, e negative 5. Okay. So 5 decimal 0, 1. That's saying times 10 to the negative 5, which is decimal 1, 2, 3, 4, 501 kilograms. Now, if I multiply by 1,000, that's decimal 501 grams after a century or 100 years. So, not very much left, but there's still some. All right, that's one type of decay problem. Now, this problem, by the way, can be posed lots of ways. And after we learn more about logarithms, we will sometimes be solving for an unknown in the exponent, which we need logs to do. So keep that in mind for future. Here's a different problem. This one deals with light intensity as light travels through water. And we're told that the intensity decreases with depth, in, and in a certain body of water, 45% of the light is lost after going one meter deep question is how much light would penetrate to 10 meters if there's an exponential relationship. <clears throat> okay, so again, uh, I mean I could use I this time for intensity, contextualize it, I based on an initial I, I have a decrease, the 1 is always there to retain the initial amount, 1 times initial amount is the initial amount. So now I subtract from that, it says we lose 45%, so I'm going to subtract decimal 4 or 5. And in this case, we don't have a time-based thing. We have a depth-based thing. So meters depth is what I'm going to call D. So 1 minus decimal 0.45 is decimal 55, which raises an important point. Uh, oh, and by the way, I know that the value of D, in this case, is 10 meters. So I can substitute that. You have to be very careful about by and 2. If you're told that something decreases by, then you subtract the percent from 1. But if you're told it decreases to a value, then you use the quoted value. You have to watch the wording of that. So an example of 2 might be um, a car depreciates each year. This is another example of, of a loss or a decay. A car depreciates. <clears throat> to 60% of its previous value. That means that you're going to use the base 
decimal 6 with time. The equivalent expression would, would be to say a car depreciates by 40%, which leaves the 60%. All right, back to this problem. So the initial intensity, we're not quoted any specific units. So let's talk about percentages. We have all of the light intensity initially at the surface. So my intensity varies with depth, which in this, in this case is 10. So I'm going to use my 100%, my decimal 55, raise exponent 10, and I will get decimal 253. Decimal 253. Now, let me just go back to the calculator for a moment. <clears throat> Notice that I put in 100 as a percentage. I didn't say 1. 100% is the number 1, but I actually left it as a percentage. And that means that this answer is a percentage answer, not a decimal version of a percentage. So this actually is decimal 0, 0, 2, 5, 3 percent of the light. Very, very little light penetrates past 10 meters. That's why it's so dark in the ocean once you get to some depth. Anyway, these are a couple of example problems of the kinds of things that come up with decrease or decay and exponential repeated multiplication.